walked in Jerusalem and all the people started seeing him as this coming king and they were celebrating that whole week what would be called the Passover and some of you may have partook in that some of you may have gone I've heard about it don't know what it is but it's something that started 1400 years before this day and the reason that we're celebrating is because Jesus did enter in and some of the people believe that he had come to 
be this great king, to become this uh, mighty savior to come and redeem them. At their time, they thought it was Jesus had come to save them from the Roman Empire. But God had bigger plans than that. In those 1400 years, what started this whole festival was back in Egypt, the children of Israel were captive, the Hebrew children were captive slaves, and they had only known slavery for 400 years. And God spoke to a man called Moses, and he, uh, he had told him, he says, I need to set my people free, I want to set them free. And part of that, uh, the scripture here in Exodus chapter 6, verse 3, it's, this is in the Amplified, and it goes on into the Hebrew uh, expression of that and he says he tells Moses is Moses I appear to Abraham and Isaac and Jacob as God Almighty uh, El, El Shaddai many of you heard that term and not understood it but it's El Shaddai means God Almighty it's, it's knowing you've got someone mighty on your side but he says this to Moses he says they know me as El Shaddai but I want to introduce myself at a different level my name the Lord, or Yahweh, the redemptive name of God, I did not make myself known to them, talking about the Hebrews before the slavery, uh, in acts and great miracles, but I'm going to perform those, I'm going to show those, and I'm going to show them as a coming of the person who's going to deliver. And when you see the miracles, and when you see these signs, you'll know that this Messiah, this King has come. And so the children of Israel, through Moses, he started talking to them and said, uh, here's the interesting thing about El Shaddai uh, versus Yahweh. El Shaddai means mighty. And many of us are humbled by the, the great strength of other people. We, we see them and we're just in awe of their strength. It humbles you. And awe of someone is, is a means of humility. It makes you admire them because of that. Some it's knowledge and it's just this incredible a wealth of knowledge and you look at them and you go, man, that is amazing. You're looking at them, you're in awe of them and that is a means of humility. There is another one that comes from ability and someone that, that the final two is out there uh, that you're looking at and go, man, they can do, they're so good at what they do and then you admire them because of their ability. Others, it's just accomplishments. He's done all kinds of things and he goes, do you know that God built that building or that, that person restored that car or, or that person baked this cake? I mean, there's, there's, that's where I like it the most. So, sorry. But with this admiration going, man, that is awesome. And when there's that sense of awesomeness, that is a sense of humility. And El Shaddai was great God. It put you in this presence of going this humble position. God is great. It's the same thing that you have when you see a, a pro football team and about a 400 pound guy standing on the sideline with sweat pouring down his face. He has these black marks under his eyes and he's standing there and he looks like he could kill anybody. And as he's standing there, the camera pans around and when he gets to him, he looks at the camera and goes, Hi, Mom. <laughs> and the reason is, is that because love conquers this 400 pound guy to know this humility. He is awestruck of his mother. Of all the people and all the things that he could growl and he could look almighty and everything, he humbles himself and he says, hi mom. And it's this awe that is taken with him that turns this great huge man into this little powder puff on the sideline of being able to recognize love. It's awesome. And God says, I want to introduce myself to these Hebrew children. They know me as great, mighty God. But what I want to do is I want to introduce myself as Yahweh, which means I am. I am. And listen, the transition of that is I'm no longer just a mighty God and a God who promised you Canaan land, the Hebrew heaven, and what is equivalent to that. Because a lot of people today only know God as this big God that sets up there and it's something about heaven. But he wants to introduce himself to the children of Israel as Yahweh. I am. I am with you. I, I know who you are. I know your name. I'm reachable. I'm touchable. 
I am not so distant and mighty that I can't be found in you. And that was who this God was trying to introduce. He says, uh, Moses, I'm trying to get you to introduce me to the children of Israel on these terms. I introduced myself before in these terms, but I want you to know me as this. And this is the beginning of the transition that started the Passover that created the entrance of Jesus coming to the world. So God turned and gave them four promises. He says in Hebrews, I'm mean, sorry, in Exodus chapter 6, verse 6, he says this to them. He says, Therefore say to the Israelites, I am the Lord, and I will bring you out from under the yoke of the Egyptians. I will free you from being slaves to them, and I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and a mighty acts of judgment. Look at those two things there. He says, I am the Lord, and I will bring you out. That's his first promise. And he says, I need you to tell these slaves, these Hebrew slaves, that I'm going to save you. And the second thing that he said he would do is, I will free you from being slaves to them. He says, I'm going to take you not only out of Egypt, but I'm going to free this slave mentality that you have, that you have and been in bed with for 400 years. They had never been able to defend themselves for 400 years. They were used to being beat. They were used to that being the typical way of their life. And God was saying, I'm going to bring you out. And some of us know that God brings you out of your Egypt, your sin, your past slavery. But sometimes you need to get Egypt out of you. So we some of us experience accepting Christ in our life, but we not experience Christ getting us and that sin nature out of us. And that's what he says. I'm not only going to bring you out of Egypt, but I'm going to bring Egypt out of you. And that's one of the things that, the two things that he promised. And then he says in verse 7, he says, I will take you as my own people. I'm going to take you, and I'm going to gather you in, and I'm going to call you my people. He says, I've got a place for you. I have a family for you. I have a connection for you. I have a ministry for you. I have a team for you to be on. And you will be my people. You will no longer be out there trying to find a place to connect. But I've got a place for you. I have redeemed you. That's another thing he says. I have redeemed you, which means I am claiming you back to your original calling and state. And God says, I promise these four things. I will save you. I will deliver you. I will redeem you, give you restoration into your heart that is from the original plan that God has, and then I will place you in a family. I will give you fulfillment in your life. That's what He promised the children of Israel. And I want you to know there is an enemy that loves to keep you enslaved. That enemy wants to keep you bound, and he wants to keep you uh, thinking that you're in charge when you're really just trying to do the next thing that would bring some type of joy. And the Lord says to you this morning, through Jesus Christ, He had come and that promise that they, they had looked for of Jesus, this Messiah coming. Jesus comes on that one week on Palm Sunday, walks into Jerusalem and they were looking. Some of the people recognized Him, but they didn't understand why Jesus had to die and be crucified. But in the Passover meal, and Jesus was slaughtered at the same time the Passover meal. The lamb had to be slain. This lamb had to be uh, pierced. This lamb had to be beaten, struck in every single way. And because that lamb would take away the sins of Israel once a year, Jesus comes into Jerusalem. And the people didn't understand that He had come to take away the sins of the world. And once for all, that no longer did they have to have a sacrificial lamb because the lamb had been slain. And so today we celebrate that Jesus has come in. And, but there are people who are bound in slavery. There are things that has got them bound. And they're not experiencing the freedom that this wonderful lamb has been slain for. Or Jesus has come and died for them. And today is a day that you can stand up to your enemy. Because your enemy only wants uh, three things to do in your life. And it's found in John 10.10. 10. And he says this about your enemy. He says that <clears throat> your enemy has come to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But I have come that you might overcome 
and you may have life abundantly. And that is the Lamb we celebrate today. That is the person that we glorify this morning. As we adore Him, and as we praise Him, as we recognize this King of Kings who has come to restore us. And so this morning, one of the things we're going to ask you to do is that we're going to ask you to consider God. And God may be this distant God, this uh, El Shaddai, this distant person. But God, this God I'm talking about this morning, is here. And His name is Yahweh. And He is, I am. I will save you. I will deliver you. I will redeem you. I will fulfill your life. And you can know this Lord today. You can know this Lamb of God today. And so today, God, we just celebrate you. We give you all the glory. You are worthy of our praise. And Lord, we open up our hearts to receive a full understanding of the goodness of our God this morning. We give you thanks. And we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Can you celebrate Him today? just like one of them. I grew up in church. I was close to Jesus. I could sing all the songs, and I could even tell you the Bible stories. But there came a time in my life where that just wasn't enough. I turned my back on Jesus and everything that I believed in. Growing up in church, I had heard how the soldiers would beat Jesus how they whipped him, how they mocked him. And I would always wonder, how can they do that the whole time, knowing who he's supposed to be? Funny thing is, as it turns out, I ended up just like one of these soldiers. Thank <laughs> you. 
Jesus Christ, the Lord of Lords, our Savior, He never turned His back on me. He welcomed me back with open arms as if I had never done anything wrong. That's how I know that no matter what is in my past, my future is in Jesus. What about yours?
Savior of the world was fallen. His body on the cross, His blood poured out for us, the weight of every curse upon Love for you and love for me. 
the love that he has for each and every one of us put the nails in his hands. It's what gave him the strength to endure the beating. It was love that poured out of his veins when his blood ran down that cross. Today, that love is here. That love is speaking to you and I. You know, we've all sinned. We've all messed up. We've all come, fallen short of the perfection that God needs. But it's because of the ransom that Jesus paid on that cross that we can step into His glory. That God would reveal Himself not just as the Almighty God, not just as the Creator of the universe, but as the Great I Am. The I Am. God wants to reveal Himself to you as I Am. He wants to be the I Am that cleanses your sin. He wants to be the I Am that is your fullness, that's your destiny. God is speaking to each and every one of us today. The Bible says that I've, uh, in, in Deuteronomy, pull it up here. In Deuteronomy, chapter 30, verse 19, it says this, I call heaven and earth to record against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. So what do we do? We've been presented with the gospel. We, we know the story. And we know how it ends. So today we have a choice to make. Do we choose life? Or do we choose death? Do we choose blessings? Or do we choose curses? Do we choose Jesus Christ, the great I Am? Or do we choose our own ways, our own religion, our own ideas and thoughts? God gives us the answer. He says, therefore, choose life. And I'm asking you today to choose life. If you never before asked Jesus to be the Lord of your life, if you were to say to me, I, you know, Cole, I don't know. If I were to die today, I don't know for sure that I would go to heaven. You can have that answer today. It's as simple as this. The Bible says in, in Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10, it says, If any mouth, or with, i got to look it up. The Bible says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. It says, for with the, the heart man believes unto righteousness, but with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. You may have been like some of those that were up here giving testimony today and, and grown up in church, and, and you may have heard this story all of your life, and yet it's never sunk in and you never truly believe. Today, believe that story. And call on his name. And you'll find refuge in his family. You'll find peace from your sins. So with every head bowed and every eye closed, I, I'd like you to answer this question. If I were to walk out of here, do I know for sure that I'm going to heaven? If your answer to that is no, there's nobody looking around, I want you to lift your hand up. If you don't know for sure that you would uh, you would go to heaven if you were to die today, lift your hand up. I see that hand. I see that hand. And that one. Is there anyone else? I see that over there. And over here. You don't know for sure that you would go to heaven when you die. Just raise that hand up. It's nothing to be ashamed of. The Bible says, I see those hands in the back. I see those. 
The Bible says that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. You will either do it today or you will do it in the future, whether it's on this side of the grave or whether it's at the, at the judgment seat of Christ. Choose life today. If you would, if you raised your hand, I would like you to stand up and come to the front here. I want to meet you up here at the front. Come on up. I saw many hands. Just come on up. Come on. Come on. education you have. It doesn't matter if you are pushing a broom. It doesn't matter if you're the CEO of a company. It doesn't matter who you are. Every knee will have to bow. Every tongue must confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. I saw more hands than this. If you'd like to come up, come on up. Let me ask you this. Maybe today is the day that you're sitting here and say, hey, I've already made that prayer. I've already done that, but you know what? I've been away from God for a long time. I want to come back to Him. This altar's for you too. If that's you, come on forward. Praise God. But for those of you that are here, I want you to look up here and, and look at me. Jesus died for you. If you were the only person if you were the only person that had sinned, he would have come and he would have died the same just for you. God loves us that much. He would have done it all for just one. So what I want you to do is I want you to bow your heads. And, and if you would, in there, out in the, the audience, if, if you raised your hand and you, you wanted to come up but you didn't, I want you to say this prayer after me too. As a matter of fact, why don't we all just stand up and let's repeat this prayer after me. Believe with your heart and, and pray it with your heart because God is going to answer those prayers and He's going to come into you and He's going to be the great I Am in your life. He's going to be the Lord of Lords and your King. Repeat this prayer after me and believe it. Say, Father God, I thank You for sending your son Jesus to die for me. Lord Jesus, I thank you for paying my price, for shedding your blood and giving your life for me. God, I accept that payment. I accept your blood. Come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. I give my life to you. Everything that I am, everything that I have been, and everything that I will be, it's yours, Lord Jesus. Save me today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah.